I'm Sarah Cooper, Head of Collections at Towner. My role is to look after the permanent collection that we hold here. There's approximately 5,000 works in the collection altogether, ranging from paintings and sculpture to multimedia and contemporary work. It's a broad role. <laughs> So the Edward Stott show came about at Towner through two different means. He was someone I'd been particularly interested in for quite a long time. We've got five of his works in the permanent collection and I was quite keen to find out more about him as an artist. Then I received a phone call one day from an academic called Dr Valerie Webb who was writing a book about Edward Stott and why he'd been forgotten over the years. We got talking about Stott and how much we both liked his work and I was wondering if there was an exhibition planned about him to which she told me there wasn't. And I felt it was entirely appropriate and a great time to do the show here at Towner. Edward Stott was quite early on showed a, a talent for art, for drawing. His father was a mill owner and he was incredibly keen for his son to follow in his footsteps, to, to work in the mill, to take on the mill and was incredibly resistant to his son's passion for art. He, he was not supportive of, of that as a career path at all. There were two fires at the mill which almost financially ruined the family, but they did gradually pick it back up. And Stott took on a role in the office of, of his father. And at that point, he went and studied at Manchester Academy of Fine Art in the evenings to hone some of those skills. His work was picked up by uh, a patron who then gave Stott some money to go and study in Paris and engaged in both kind of the technical advancing of his, of his work but also a lot of philosophical discussion about art and influences that were incredibly um, engaging for him. He then went on to study at the École des Beaux-Arts under Alexandre Cabanel. Um, who again widened his sphere of, of understanding of, of the art world, um, pushed him to go on, on painting trips outside Paris to the, to the surrounding countryside, which he did and became very aware of other artists who were working in those areas, the, the Impressionists, so Pissarro, Bastien Lepage, artists like that. After he'd finished his studies in Paris, he moved back to England um, he was incredibly keen to find somewhere where he could settle, where he could work, to paint, to become part of the community. He travelled around the country a bit and eventually fell in love with the village of Amberley in West Sussex. A lot of his fellow villagers feature in his paintings, a lot of people that work the land, the women, the, the, the children, the babies also feature in his paintings and he felt incredibly at home in Amberley. So the painting here is Washing Day of 1899. The study for this work is in the Towner collection and we were really pleased to be able to borrow the original, um, which is in the collection of the Watts Gallery in Surrey. It shows Stott at a point when he was living and working in Amberley and he had become interested in, in work, in, particularly at this point in women's work. So here we can see the, the, the women doing the washing, they're hanging out the washing outside. And what it really does is, as well as focusing on the people, it gave Stott the opportunity to explore the light and the atmosphere, which is what he was so interested in. 